Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to take these three exposures and I'm going to do this photo using dynamic range increase. Come and join me. Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs, and welcome to episode 30 of my photography, Lightroom and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Ramedy, and I live where? Somewhere in Europe, between England and Italy, in France, Paris. Okay, last week we started doing what we call dynamic range increase or digital blending, meaning taking several exposures to just get one good exposure. And instead of using a software like an HDR software, like Photomatix or HDR UFX Pro, we do that using layers in Photoshop. This week, we're gonna do that even further. We're gonna take this three exposure, that's a normal exposure, that's the underexposure, and that's the overexposure. And we are gonna retouch each one for a specific purpose, and this is the final result. So come and join me and let me show you how we do this. Okay, so this uh, tutorial is a demonstration of what we call the dynamic range increase instead of the HDR or also called digital blending. I'm into Lightroom and this is how it goes. Basically, I've got three exposure, one in which is a normal exposure, an underexposure, and an overexposure. And uh, what I usually do is I take the first photo and I'm gonna basically retouch the first photo for the overall look. And then I'm just gonna retouch the second photo, which is the sky, just for the, for the sky and the third photo I'm going to use it for the foreground see how the water is a lot more silky there and this is how the lines are like a lot more strict so this is how I go I take the first photo and I do my usual workflow which is open up the shadows bring down the highlights okay press the option key and do a white point and then do a black point okay I'm gonna go for a pretty blue look, which is uh, kind of fine by me. I like this overall type of blue. Uh, no, maybe I'm gonna go for shade, shade. Yeah, shade is good. Shade is good, and I'm gonna brighten up the whole photo. because I wanna make sure that the average thing is pretty brightened up. Then I'm gonna zoom in. There's a bit of noise there. So then I'm gonna do some really noise, big noise reduction here, around 48%. Then the sharpening, I'm going to make around 50. I don't want to make it too much. And I'm going to mask it. So I'm going to press the Option key and go to the right until I see, yeah, I don't want to do any sharpening on any sky. So until I see the sky completely black. Okay, now I'm good. So the sharpening is only happening on the contour. We have, we have a lot of aberrated, uh, chromatic aberration. So let's click this, check it out, it takes it out. Profile, let's click, let me go back and on about profiles correction okay that's good and then I'm maybe gonna do some post crop vignetting here yeah something like that let's add some clarity let's add some vibrance now uh, I'm missing a bit here on the sky here the sky this spot I would like this spot to be a bit warmer so let me just take a brush and as usual I'm just gonna go into uh, temperature make this a bit warmer warmer and maybe a bit darker and I'm just gonna paint this part because this part was really strong okay so I could stop there I mean this is you know just a regular retouching of one photo I mean let me maybe add some uh, yeah contrast a bit something like that yeah contrast and make the exposure even yeah even better than that Okay, the sky is too bright, so let's do a little ND filter. And I'm gonna bring the sky down a little bit. Oh, I have some tint here in the sky, so I'm gonna press the Option key, click on Reset. Okay, and bring down the exposure, and maybe add a bit of blue, just in the sky. I like this blue sky against red sunset, kind of like that. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that first photo. So now I'm gonna think all I've done on the first photo, on all other photo, on on the two other ones, right? Uh, and then I'm going to take the underexposed photo. 
and I'm just going to look at it from a sky viewpoint. You know, from a sky viewpoint, it looks good. You know, it looks very strong, you know. And then I look at the, at the bright photo and I just look at it from the viewpoint of here. Now, this one for me is a bit too, um, too bright. So let me get the exposure down a little bit. Yeah, I just want to... So I'm only looking at the bottom part of the photo because this is the only thing that interests me really on this one. And maybe not that much, but something. I want this to be bright, but not that bright. Might get some of the of the of the buildings there. Okay, let me go back on the dark one. This is a bit dark, uh, but it's okay. You know, we want this sort of dark sky, so I'm just gonna brighten up. I'm maybe gonna go into noise reduction, and on this one, and just on this one because it's got a lot of noise, I'm gonna put the um, the noise reduction. I'm gonna put the whole weight to 100 on this one. Ooh, and on colors too, because I know it's full of noise. Okay, but just on the underexposed photo. So basically, what did I do? You know, I edited each photo for each purpose. I edited this photo for the average look. Okay, I edited this photo uh, for the sky, for this incredible sunset I had in Paris. And then I edited this for the bottom part, for the strike, the lights here, and the silky water, because this was the longest exposure of all. So now I've got, I've got all three selected. I'm going to go right click, edit, open as layers in Photoshop, not, not to open in Photoshop here, open as layers in Photoshop. Why is that? Because it's going to put one Photoshop file and each photo is going to go on its own layer. And that's really cool. And that's where the digital blending is going to happen, mesdames et messieurs. So, okay, it's going to take a second to open up. So that's the bright photo, very nice still. And all I'm doing, I'm doing just that to get back the, you know, without having this HDR look, getting back just the details that I had, uh, you know, the, I mean, how I saw that scene, that's the underexposed photo, you know, in big on Photoshop. So yeah, we're just trying to get nature back on, you know, and that's what the post-processing, I'm not gonna exaggerate, it was a, a crazy sunset, this one was crazy. Okay, so now, uh, I'm going to take the, that's the, uh, that's the normal exposure. So I'm going to click on normal. Okay. I'm going to name it normal. That's the dark one. And that's the light one. Okay. Now I'm going to put the normal in the middle. Oops. I'm sorry. I'm going to put this in the middle. So I've got dark, normal, light. That's how your sandwich should be. Then on the dark one, I'm just going to press the option key or the alt key and put a mask, which is going to mask the entire sky and then i'm going to take a brush by pressing b and that brush i'm going to put around i don't know i don't know like 50 percent and i'm just going to brush with white in the foreground because when you have a black mask and you paint with white it reveals what's on that layer and i'm just getting you know back that amazing sky that i had you know little by little you know i'm just getting it back here um when I come to the top, I can maybe lower the opacity. I just want to get a bit of the sky here. Now check it out. Before, after. Ooh, I got my sunset back. Now, I do the opposite. On the normal one, I don't do the Alt key. I just create a mask, a white one. So then I press the X key so that my black is, is the foreground color. But this time, I know that I want to get the whole CK water and I want to get the lines correctly. So I'm going to go opacity 100 on my brush and check this out. I'm just bringing back the silky water here and look at this. Pa -dum, pa -dum. I love that. Okay. So now you've got the best of the three worlds. Uh, I can even try to go zoom on the buildings, take a brush because I know I have a bit of uh, and see what happens if I brush, yeah, I just bring back some lights here and there, you know, on the buildings to make it more interesting. Because this is the, uh, you know, this is the uh, overexposed photo. I can even do that here a bit on this, some spots here on the, on the trees to make it more interesting. And uh, yeah, so you've got really the best of all three worlds. Okay, if you think the sky is a bit too much, you can just lower down the opacity, you know, a little bit. Yeah, but I'm going to keep it that way. Okay, so then I'm just going to go to layers, uh, flatten image, and then use the crop tool, the crop tool, which is here. And I'm just going to crop here a little bit, 
think it looks a bit nicer. Yeah, I want to get this to one third, you know, make, making this a bit less like that. And voila. Okay, I love that. Now the photo needs a bit of cleanup, but you know, that's fine. There's a bit of spots in the sky. That's all right. We just take the uh, famous spot hitting brush tool and we just brush them away. And the reason why I have spots just by the way is because I was trying to get a long exposure to get the silky water. So uh, I was like, um, I think all photos were like F13 or F14. So, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work. Okay. Now these raw files will be available uh, just about the release time of this podcast. So if you want to have this photo and try it at home and print it at home, you're willing, you, you can do that. No problem. Okay, I love the result. It's one of my favorite photos uh, for in the last uh, months. And uh, so, and it's the most powerful retouching technique I ever found, this digital blending, you know. You really get the best out of all your three photos and just take what's best and you get that's the final result. And that's how it looked when I took it. But not least, if you go on my website, photosearch.com slash apps, I have a limited time offer which started in January, where I give 30% off on all my training, and which is here. So you get all the line troop training for $21 instead of 30. That is six hours of training for $21. It's a steal, I know, but that's how it is. And or $28 for four, uh, for almost eight hours of Photoshop training, and $49 instead of 70 for all my training. That's like over 10 hours of training. For $49, seven years it took me to learn all these techniques and I just give it to you for so little money. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. It's really, uh, that's really how it is. And if you want to check my podcast, you can just go here on podcast and uh, you will see all the episodes. And this is also where you can purchase the raw files. Okay, so let's get back to the studio. Okay, guys, so I hope you like that tutorial. Dynamic range increase is really, for me, the most powerful workflow I hope you learned something and you're going to try it at home. It's really great because it's like doing HDR without the HDR look. Well, as usual, I ask you if you can share this podcast on your social network, Facebook, Google Plus, or whatever you have. It helps me promote it. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next week.